welcome to our review on hydrogen ions and pH. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is this idea of concentration. Now what we've already looked at in our earlier chemistry topic is this idea of a solution. So a solution is a solute dissolved in a solvent. And hopefully we know the basics of concentration in those terms. So that if we dissolve a greater amount of solute, then we will have a much higher concentration. If we then turn that into terms of acids, if we refer to a dilute acid, then that's got a very low ratio of acid to a volume of the solution. If we're talking about a concentrated acid, then we've got a really high ratio of acid to the volume of the solution. So dilute is obviously one that's got that low ratio of our solute to the volume, whereas a concentrated one, a high ratio of our solute to the volume of solution. The second idea we're going to look at is the idea of strength. Now, we do know that when acids are in aqueous solution, they release hydrogen ions. And the reason that they can do that is that the covalent bond that holds the hydrogen to the other part of the substance is going to break. Now, when that covalent bond breaks, the hydrogen ion is released and the negative ion is released. So when we actually talk about the strength of an acid, it's going to be determined by how many hydrogen ions are released. Now, that could also be referred to as how ionized it is. So if we take the example of a weak acid, then they are what's called partially ionized. So that tells us that only some of the hydrogen ions have been released from the molecule. However, a strong acid is what's called fully ionized. So all of the molecules have released their hydrogen ions. So if we take a look at a weak acid, we've got ethanoic acid. Now, what we actually find is that when the ethanoic acid is in aqueous solution, then some of those hydrogen ions will be released, but not all of them. So it's a weak acid because it's only partially ionized. Only some of the hydrogen ions have been released from the actual ethanoic acid molecule. And the way we represent that in the equation is using the reversible arrow symbol. So it's got half an arrow going to the right and half an arrow going to the left. So as soon as you see that arrow is present, it tells us that the reaction is not going to completion, i.e. not all of the hydrogen ions are being released from the molecule. So we have a weak acid. If we now have a look at a strong acid, here's nitric acid for us then you'll notice that the arrow has changed to just going into a single direction. And the reason for that is that this reaction does go to completion. Because nitric acid is a strong acid, it is fully ionized. So all of the hydrogen ions are released from the molecule. So that's why we only have the arrow going in one direction because it's all being released. So just to recap, there are two very different terms that we use in association with acids, the concentration and the strength. Now, all too often people mix these two terms up. So we need to be really careful in understanding what concentration means and what strength means. So if we're talking about the concentration, it's how much of the solute is dissolved in the solvent, whereas the strength of the acid is how ionized it is. So how many hydrogen ions have been released? So what does this all mean in terms of pH? Well, when the concentration of hydrogen ions increases by a factor of 10, then we can say that the pH of that solution decreases by one. Now, if we look and see what that actually means in terms of our concentration and strength, if we have our ethanoic acid and our nitric acid, so we've got a strong acid and a weak acid there, and we have them at the same concentration. So we've got a one molar nitric acid and a one molar ethanoic acid. Then what we will see there is that the nitric acid, the strong acid, has a lower pH than the ethanoic or the weak acid. However, if we think about our concentration, when an acid is concentrated, then the pH is lower than when it's dilute. So that if we've obviously got a one molar acid, then that has a lower pH than a 0.5 molar acid. 
So just remember those two links there between the strength and obviously the pH and the concentration and the pH. The last thing we're going to look at is a pH titration curve. Now, what a pH titration curve actually shows is the effect on the pH of changing the hydrogen ion concentration when we carry out this neutralization reaction. So the way that we'd actually carry this out is in the box on the left there. So we start off by measuring a certain volume, in this case 25 centimetres cubed, of our dilute alkali, and we've placed that into a beaker. We are then going to estimate its pH using universal indicator or a pH meter. What we then do is we're going to add one centimetre cubed of our dilute acid, give it a stir to make sure it's all distributed, and then record the pH. Now you're going to repeat that right the way through until you've got an excess of acid. So that means that until it goes to an acidic pH. Once you've finished all of that, you can plot your results on a graph just like the one on the right there. So volume of acid along the bottom, along your x-axis, and then the pH of your mixture on the y-axis up the side. So that what you can actually see there is that at our 25 centimetres cubed, we saw that point of neutralization because you can actually draw your little lines across from the seven to our line and down to the bottom and you would find that it'd be 25 centimetres cubed of acid that neutralised our alkali in that case.